Justin, we're back again talking about stocks, huh? Fun Our topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh, show me on shipping. Yeah, all right, let's, let's roll right into it. So I'm going to pull up a chart to Zim. Well, Justin's going to pull up a chart to Zim while I talk about it. I am extremely bullish on this company right now as they are producing cash. Earnings are coming out in a few months or a few weeks, and they are projected to earn like like 50 percent cash flow and i think they're going to beat that shipping rates have continued up uh the whole sector of shipping took a massive hit today as the government is now coming into los angeles and saying hey we're going to open up the ports 24 7. biden's taking a big step here what is biden doing he is doing nothing why is this a problem why are there so many ships at the port of la because of these covid restrictions because of these restrictions are, are preventing these ships to come in and out like they used to. They have to now have stringent policies and a tight protection of all the workers involved. Josh, just a quick question. Yeah. So basically what I hear you saying is, is that there are artificial constraints on supply and demand is staying relatively same. Therefore, supply oh, think, goes yeah. down, demand goes up, or excuse me, demand stays the same, supply goes down. You've got the pressure cooker on price for profit for the firms, right? I think that this would have been inevitable. The last shipping bull market was in 2008, 2009, uh, 2010, Whoa. around that time. Hold on. So it was, it was right after the great financial crisis? Or the great financial right crisis? after, yeah. Well, it's, there's, a, there's a correlation between shipping prices and commodities. And co there's a nice commodity bull run after the Great Depression because when commodity prices go up, then the shippers now charge more to ship those commodities across the world. Okay, and okay. so... There's been a 10 year bear market in shipping. With that, you have seen massive underdevelopment. This is, this is a new company and it just got on the NASDAQ, so you can't see much further out, which is why. It, but there's been massive underdevelopment. So, either way, there was a supply crunch on, on these shippers. Now, with COVID, these ships can't even move freely, ports are closing. These ships are forced to stay in the water because of all the restrictions. It is ridiculous. This company, they they rent ships. So they rent ships a few years, and this is the absolute perfect time. So they are seeking up all the profits of, of renting a ton of ships to ship across the world, and they're just in a great, great position. And then if you look at this chart, we were talking about Zim around 40 40 43 dollars the last time and we just saw a massive run right when we started talking about there's a nice consolidation period be before the last time remember when we were talking about it yeah justin what, and then we saw a huge run up to 60 and that's when i was selling i was saying justin i kind of want to go short but i'm, I'm not going to do that because i'm still bullish longer term i didn't go short but now i think it's an incredible buying opportunity again i have I'm getting mainly call options because I want the leverage for someone with a smaller portfolio with me. Along with these companies, this is a small $5 billion market cap company and they move quickly, especially when they, if an earnings absolutely smash expectations, I think there could be a quick run up to 60, 70, $80. Okay. Along with that, today there's a massive, it was a massive red day in shipping. And I was buying calls throughout the entire day. But what was really interesting towards the end of the day, as the stock was falling, the call options were actually going up. And that means implied volatility on the stock was rising. That could mean more volatile to the downside or upside, but the stock can't go down much further or they're going to be at a one PE ratio of a price to earnings where they'll literally be making more money than their entire market cap. And that, that I don't know if that has ever happened. If that happens, trust me, I would love it. I would be selling most of my positions and putting them all into this company. There is a few times a year where you really have to trade big when you have an incredible opportunity. I think this is one of those times. This is my second time doing this. And I still only have about five, six, I think five to 10% of my portfolio, not even. I'd say I think like six, seven percent into this stock only in call options, longer dated. I would like to get that up to 10, 15 percent if the if there's still a buying opportunity. Do you have any comments, Justin? 
No, no. I mean, like, uh, I was actually aware of the uh, the run-up in the end, should we say, at the tail end of 2008, 2009, 2010. I mean, that was actually the first time I heard it. Very interesting. I would not have thought that, but, uh, you know, very interesting to hear it see nonetheless. The thing I is, think it was, like, I, I might have gotten the dates wrong. It's like 2010, 2011, around that. It's around that time, right after the GFC. The other thing that I found interesting was that um, if they're just doing operating, or back, if they're just leasing the ships, then it almost suggests that the leases they have on the ships is actually their asset in the sense that they don't have to do the long term. I mean, I don't know what the cost of the ship, but probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, um, they're just getting, they're getting so much cash flow. They could pay off their debt with what they made last quarter. Some some analysts are, are projecting like a 16% dividend yield. I, as an option holder, I would prefer them to do a stock buyback pulp program. Oh, no, 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 no. They can almost, no, no, dividend, dividend. They can almost, they could almost completely buy out the company. They could almost buy their entire company with just from just stock. It is incredible. So now we're going to talk about gold, which this is a first. We might have, we're going to look at a longer term chart. And we were talking about this a few days ago saying that gold is dead and no one likes gold. So that's what we are liking. And maybe, maybe not. They could have been a, a we could have picked a bottom. And I'm not going to say that because people who pick bottoms are almost always wrong. And in fact, I said I was probably wrong. And I said gold will probably continue back down to go, go to zero, just like a lot of these Bitcoin folks would love. Yeah, there is. Oh, that's not fair to the Bitcoin. I, I do not think the Bitcoin folks are particularly antagonistic towards gold. I think that's a false dichotomy, but let's not get put into the weeds here. Josh, yeah, let's zoom in. I wanted to call your attention to this. Um, a nice bull flag. Looks good. <laughs> Excuse me. It was the um, when did the Fed report on inflation drop? Two was it yesterday or two days ago? Yesterday it was yesterday. Same, right? same day gold rallied. Same day. Yeah, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a um. This I think was it right here. You need to zoom out a little. No, no, no. <laughs> do I? You know, because this is you're still on intraday. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I want to be an intraday. Yeah, that this is when gold rallied. Yeah, this was it right here. Basically, what you saw happen was that report dropped or whatever, right? And basically, someone, no one in any names, started dumping a bunch of paper onto the market. Price dropped. And maybe dropped for a grand total of, I don't know, 15 minutes. And then it rallied. Same thing with silver, by the way. And it rallied and it rallied strong. And so it's kind of, I felt like it was the market overriding some people who were other than trying to override the market. But that was the only, um, my only take on that front. So, so, yeah, something that I find really interesting right now with the gold market is how heated it is. It's just incredible. Even with this move, I mean, it it was incredible for my portfolio. And um, I didn't hear anyone talking about it. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anyone say, hey, like, like gold was up like 2% on the day, which is just a massive mood, mood for gold. I think people really don't care because they can make 100% in cryptos in a month. If you are really holding gold, when it gets into a mega bull market like we saw in the 70s, it will be moving and these miners will be absolutely hiking it just like just like these Bitcoin miners. And I think that same thing will probably happen in the gold market. It will probably happen in the uranium market as well. And I want to be there to see it happen. I am not. I have paper hands. And when things get expensive, I sell them very quickly. But I think real yields are going to continue to go down. And there's an inverse correlation between real yields and the price of gold. So if the Fed keeps interest rates low with say yield curve control or something, then and inflation takes off, I think we are in for a ride. And so either way, I'd say gold is undervalued right now. Yeah, anything that add to that too is that when you get a gold bull run, especially if it's done out of fear, it's far different than greed. Because fear will be um greed of course is a motivator, fear is a stronger motivator. So yeah, uh, nothing quick. And what is it? Sheckman, I think Andy Sheckman says there ain't no run like a gold bull run due to the uh, the implied fear behind it. The other thing um, I find interesting, and this is one of those things where, I mean, we were talking about this before we jumped on the call. Where like I, I I'm fundamentally a real estate guy, which means I'm incredibly slow when it comes to trade. Like I, I get in a trade and then I just sit in the trade. Whatever. Point is though, um, when you look at, uh, I think when the Bitcoins guys do that, they do a really good job of calling attention to this to say, what's what's one Bitcoin worth? Well, it's worth one Bitcoin. And I think the gold guys and the precious metals guys, you know, they need to take you know kind of a page because I think the crypto guys are one hundred percent correct. It's like, listen, if you're in metals because you want to be out of the dollar, and I completely agree with that. Don't get me wrong, I think that's the right attitude. But why, if you want to be out of the dollar, are you using the dollar as your yardstick 
of success. That makes no sense. You should want the price to go down because that means you can exchange more of what you believe to be a falling asset, the dollars, for you know a real tangible asset. Like I, I just I something that I think people would be really fascinated about is right now I'm very bullish gold, but I'm also bullish dollars. And that is dollars against other currencies. I think I think we could see an appreciation in the dollar, appreciation in gold, appreciation in the stock market all at the same time. And a lot of people just think that's not possible. But gold, I mean, the dollar and on the Dixie is strictly just the dollar against other currencies. And I think, as Brent Johnson says, the dollar could be the cleanest dirty shirt. And the dollar's strong right now. Gold has been rallying into a strong dollar, which is really nice to see as well. Yeah. And the other thing, too, that I completely agree with that, but I would also add, too, that what you're really seeing is that the dollar strong against everything, or if everything is going up in terms of dollars, we say it like that, my argument is, is no, the dollar is going down in terms of every real thing yeah. you're buying. Now, that being said, if you compare it to, you know, the, what would be like the euro, the yen, the others, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, they, they could be going down against real goods and services as well. Yeah. So, um, anyways, I, I, I think that's, that's the case. I would also say, too, that I think that... Well, no, we'll, we'll leave that for another video. But yeah, I, I, Josh, points. I completely agree with your your take on that front. So, yeah. all right, goodbye. Well, next time.